Hey guys, in this video we're going to learn how to dynamically allocate arrays, or memory for arrays. So in our last video we learned how to dynamically allocate uh, some structs, and we read in a file that we knew only had four students in it, and we saved their information to a couple of structs uh, that we created dynamically in memory. And so uh, in this situation what we want to do is we've got a file that has a whole bunch of students, and I've just copied and pasted the same names, but uh, it has a whole bunch of students, and we don't know how big this file is, but we want to be able to read it in, get all the students in, and then maybe do something with the, the information. And in this video, we won't do anything with this information. So here we've got a couple of pre-declarations. I'm going to ask you just to not pay attention to this right now. Uh, we'll look at the actual functions here in a second. Here, here I've declared int uh, our array size. I've declared size 4, so this is what you need to do. And then we've declared uh, this dynamic array here. So we've got new student info so that's the the array uh, is of type student info and then we pass in our array size here so it's only it's only four things long and as we can see that we're going to need a lot more than four if we're going to read in this file so uh, what i've done is i've i've made this function read in file function and what i've passed in is the location of array size because i want to this array size we're going to be using the same variable the entire time and we're going to change the size of our array uh, as we go along as we need to. So moving down here we've got our, our read-in file function here and uh, what we're passing into this is we're passing in that array size as we remember from before and then we're passing in what we're doing here is we're, we're using the reference okay so the reference to the pointer C boulder which remember we can treat as if it was the exact same thing because it's gonna save to the it's gonna reference the same location in memory as our original C boulder did okay uh, and and that we covered in our second video on passing by reference. So this is the, the reference offer operator. So here we have input file stream uh, class and we're, we're creating uh, our sample file telling it where to read in from. We've got, oops sorry, we've got several variables here that we've declared uh, for our read in our file, our first name, last name, age, date of birth. And then uh, we're confirming that our file is open, and then we're reading in all the information. So we did, we up till here, we all this is, I literally just moved it down from main from our last video. So all that should be almost exactly the same. Uh, and then here we've got this if statement, and we created this student variable, and that, that is new, I guess. That's one, the one thing we created here. And what we're doing is we're iterating it each time we add a student. So after we add a student, we're going to say plus one. So once... Uh, once our array has a student in it, then this should have one in it. If our array has two students in it, then student count will equal two. And so what we're checking here is we're saying if our student count equals the array size, which remember we passed in for main, and so uh, here we declared a pointer, and so we're just dereferencing it to make sure if this is the same value. So if our student count is the same as our array size, we don't want to call this add student yet. And so what we're going to do is, since we don't know how many spaces we're gonna, we need to create ultimately, we're just going to double our array. We're just going to make it twice as big. So potentially we could end up with an array that's almost one less than twice as large as we actually need, but that's just what we're going to do for right now. So now we're calling this double array function. And again, what we're passing in is the C boulder, which is our, our dynamically allocated array. And then we're passing in array size. And remember, this is a pointer. So when we pass in like here, we're, we're passing in the address when we pass in like this. So let's go ahead and look at our double array function, and we'll, co we'll come back here. So our double array function is down here, and we can see, yeah, we've got the same thing as we had in our read in file function. I'll scroll up just a little bit, student info, and we're using this uh, reference to the pointer, okay? And so we're doing the same thing here, and I'll show, this is where it's really going to be in, come in handy and why I showed you that in that first video. And then again, we have another pointer here that we're declaring uh, for our array size uh, that we passed in the address. So this is referring to the original address of our array size func uh, I'm sorry, array size variable, integer variable. So here, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, uh, that original value of array size, we want it to equal the array size times two. So that's how we're gonna double the size. And then now we're, we're declaring a a, a new array of type student info and dynamically and then we're setting it equal to this array size so we're doubling this and then we're creating a new array and we're calling it temp array and uh, we're setting it equal so we're making an array twice as large as we had before 
And now we've created this new array that's twice as large as we need it, but it doesn't have anything in it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this for loop uh, for int i equals zero, i less than, and remember that we only, we it's half the size of this right now, right? Of, of our, our new array. And so we only need to go iterate through half of the, the new array, okay? So this temp array, we only need to go through half of this, which will be all of CU Boulder. So that's why we have the, the location, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, value stored at array size divided by two. And so then we just set each one of those structs equal to the, to the other struct, right? So uh, we're just moving over uh, our array and making, making it equal. And then once we exit there, we're using this delete. And here, we didn't use this last time. Uh, I think I showed it to you, but we didn't actually use it in our function. We're deleting the array and we're deleting CU Boulder. And remember when we pa we use this reference here, this reference or here, it's just as if, um, it's the same address in memory as what that's, what that's saving to. So we can, we can go ahead and just call delete. And now we're setting CU Boulder now equal to this temp array, the new array that we created that is now twice as large. So that's what we're doing here. Now, if we did not do this uh, reference to a pointer here, this uh, we would have to do something different and so what we'd actually want to do is something like this here we would call this uh, this would be student info and this would be a pointer and and what we would do we'd still delete CU Boulder and then here uh, we would want to uh, we'd want to return uh, that that uh, that array that we just created so uh, that would be a different way of doing this uh, but again I prefer this way so that's why I've, I've shown you here uh, if if you guys really need to uh, learn the other way, uh, just let me know in the comments and I can make a video on that. Uh, so then we've added, we've now uh, doubled our array. Let's go ahead and, sorry, fix that back. So now we've uh, we've called this if statement when we needed to. Let's say we've already got up to size four and our student count was size four and our array size was size four. Now we've doubled our array and we exit this double array function. And now uh, we go ahead and call add student again. And, or I'm sorry, the, <laughs> We haven't actually looked at add student, but you know, if it was size four already, we'd have called it several times. So now let's go ahead and look at this add student function. Uh, so yeah, here we have our add student function, and uh, we're again using the the reference here, uh, and we're calling this one uh, SDUD array, and we have passed in all the the information. And all we're doing in this add student thing is is exactly what we did in our last uh, last video, except for at this point, each one of these is an struct by itself and not a pointer. And so in so last video we used the error operator and now we can just use the dot operator to set each one of these values. And so let's go back down here, we called our add student, and then we can see that the rest of this is just reading in the file, just like we did in the first video. So uh, we're actually back up in main. So here we can see in main, we just read in the file, added all the students, and then uh, we called, now we're calling this print function and uh, again, we're passing in the same thing, this array size. And now this, uh, this array size has gotten quite a bit larger. So it could be up to twice as large uh, as the number of items we have in this list. So, or I, I'm sorry, maybe one more larger, I think. Now after that, remember that each time we call new, we also need to call delete. And so we did that first inside of our function uh, when we doubled our array. But now when we're when we're done with all this stuff and and potentially you would have other, you know, you'd have a lot of other functions after this if your program was massive or something. But uh, for us, we're done now with this CU Boulder. So we can delete this new array because remember we allocated the memory for it. Now we need to deallocate the memory for it. So we're just going to call delete on CU Boulder and then we return and we're done. So uh, that's how to dynamically allocate arrays and read in a file when you don't know the size of it and still save all that information into array. So I uh, will see you next video.